In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear good people, how is your Thursday? <laughs> I have always told you that it's good to start with the day smiling. Every day when you wake up, smile. <laughs> and you tell God that this day is going to be a great day. <laughs> if you wake up and you can't smile, and you start your day without a smile, you are being very unfair to yourself. Chances are, you might add the day sick. <laughs> so, I don't want you to be sick in the evening. I want you to be smiling. Wake up smiling. Spend the day smiling. Go to bed smiling. In fact, dream smiling. <laughs> Welcome to part two of why God desires us to live in freedom. Why? Why does God want us to live in inner freedom? Yesterday, we went up to number three. So we go to number four. God wants us to enjoy inner freedom so that we can grow in friendship with Jesus. So that we can grow in friendship with Jesus. And we said this on Monday when we were talking about demons. We cannot be friends with Jesus and at the same time we are demon-possessed. There must come a time when we say that enough is enough. But God created me so that I can be with him in a loving relationship with him and of course his son our Lord Jesus Christ who is my savior. And my friend, don't I love that? Number five, God wants us to enjoy inner freedom so that we can follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The promptings of the Holy Spirit. What are the characteristics of the person who is prompted by the Spirit? One that stands out is that they are able to follow the will of God. It is not about them. It is about the Christ who has called them. When we are guided of the Spirit, as it were, we are also able to respect the voice of God that we read through his word. Number six. God desires us to live in inner freedom so that we can discover what God is asking of us, what God is asking of me. Let me ask you this great Thursday, my dear brother, what is God asking of you? Maybe as a dad, maybe as a young man, maybe as a priest, an ordained minister, maybe as a, as a pastor, maybe as whoever you are. What, what is God asking of you? What is he asking of you? And once you have answered that question, are you doing that which God is asking of you? Because it is one thing knowing what God is asking of me, and it is a completely different thing, me doing that which he is asking of me. So, if you have known what he is asking of you, are you doing it? Because sometimes... Sometimes we know what God is asking of me, but then I can't follow it. So, when we are in inner freedom, as it were, then we are able to know and to discover what God is asking of me, and we can do exactly that. Number seven, God desires that we live in inner freedom so that we can respond wholeheartedly to his invitation. Responding wholeheartedly to his invitation. Every day he is inviting us into his friendship. Every day he is inviting us to walk with him. The question is about our response. Are we responding to this invitation that he is doing every day? He wakes up every day. I'm, I'm using those terminologies um, that we can use as human beings. 
that God wakes, us, wakes up every day inviting us. The question is, do we wake up responding? How many times did you wake up and you felt so lost and did not even pray? Because you felt that maybe God has forgotten you. God did not forget you. What actually happened is that there is a disconnect between you and God. And chances are, and it is, it is you who have broken it. Why? Because you have been invited. No response. Now, let me ask you. I know you have had festivities birthdays, graduations, anniversaries, mention them. And you invited people. Now tell me, I know when you invite people, you have always categorized people that are, that are coming. There are those that you would feel very bad if they didn't show up. You feel very bad that they didn't show up. Then you have your festivity, people come in their numbers, but there is this one particular person or two persons whom you feel that if they are not there, nobody came. How do you feel that uh, you invited so-and-so and he or she did not turn up or show up? Or maybe even you invited people, but nobody came at all, at all. How do you feel? Maybe it, it's your birthday. And you have a cake, you have some choma, you have some drinks, uh, soft, and dri soft and dry. I say soft and, soft and hard or soft and dry. Oh, there are people who are here who knows that language. Eh? I'm dealing with the criminals here. <laughs> but then you realize that after you have prepared all of that, nobody shows up. Food on your own. Drinks on your own. Cakes on your own. Everything on your own. It will be so bad. That is what happens when God invites us and we cannot go. There is one writer who is a bit humorous. He says that when God invites us and we do not go, we cause him stress. Of course, I like the language that he uses in his books. That uh, He says that do not stress God. Do not give God depression. <laughs> I like that language because he's telling us that God feels when he invites us and we cannot go. We must respond. Number eight, God desires inner freedom for us so that we can enter into a right relationship with all of God's creation. With all of God's creation, we enter into a right relationship sometimes we are in wrong relationships there's nothing called good relationship it's either be it is either right or wrong a relationship is not good it is either right or wrong so ask yourself among the persons that you have entered into a relationship with is it a right relationship or it's a wrong relationship have you even heard people who have relationships funny relationship with animals it's not so good to ask those questions. But God wants us to enter into right relationships. Not utilitarian. I don't want to be enter into a relationship with a friend, my friend called Joshua, to use him or to steal from him. We have people who enter into relationships for wrong motives. To use people, to malign them, to kill them. Number nine. God desires that we enjoy inner freedom. So that we can look at ourselves and the world around us and we reject evil and we rejoice in virtue. That we become people who can rejoice in virtue, doing good all the time. Number 10. He calls us into inner freedom to actively work for peace, justice and compassion. All of us are missionaries of peace, missionaries of justice and compassion. We must feel with the others. We must, number 11, he wants us to enjoy inner freedom so that we can respond generously to those who are most in need. There will always be poor with us. There will always be people who need our services. How do we respond to them? It is true that we cannot eradicate all poverty in the world. 
it is true that we cannot wake up one day and there is no poor person in the world. But the question is, those who are poor with us, what are we doing? Those who are in various needs, they may not need our money. They may not need our food. But what are we doing? Some maybe even want our physical presence. Maybe others just a word of encouragement. Maybe a text message. Maybe an email just to share, tell them that you, you care. Maybe a hug. Oh, today we can't hug people because of corona. Okay, after corona, maybe we, we shall have, we shall have Madenia hugs. <laughs> I was thinking that maybe if you need a hug and because of corona, after corona is declared uh, Imeisha, so we shall backdate hugs. <laughs> but the point is, somebody maybe just need that embrace, an embrace of assurance, very, very important. And finally, he wants us to become disciples, true followers of him, who can perpetuate that which is good, doing good all the time, doing good to everybody all the time, a disciple is always in contact and in touch. That all the time we are in touch with him who called us. We are, we are in his company, loving company. And he loves us just the way we are. My dear friend, allow me to pray for you this great day. Eternal God and Father, I thank you for the gift of your sons and daughters. Father, we thank you for the gift of the freedom you have called us into. Help us to enjoy this freedom and to be conveyors of the same to others, and especially those who are, not, who are disadvantaged. Help us to always reflect your love to all the people that we meet, your compassion, your peace, mercy, and forgiveness. Grant this through Christ our Lord. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do have a peaceful Thursday. Asante.